Hey folks, John Kelly. Welcome back to the Law Enforcement Life Coach Sometimes Heroes Need Help podcast. This podcast is being brought to you by On Target Claims, where their motto is on target from setback to settlement. Now listen, a little background. I've worked with these guys on the job, on the street for over 25 years, man, and they have always done the right thing and have always had my back. Now, in this second chapter, let them have your back right? You wouldn't go to court without an attorney. Why would you go up against an insurance company without representation, right? They represent you, the policyholder, when it, you go up against an insurance company submitting a claim. And I can tell you this, right? From beginning to end, they're going to be with you during the entire process. They're going to properly document that claim with the latest technology. And then when it comes time to getting things fixed, they've got a complete stable of vendors that are certified that are going to get it done right the first time. They also offer a pre-loss planning and policy review. So you know exactly what you're covered for, right? Make sure that you're adequately covered. The time to find out that you're not isn't after that horrific event, okay? So give my friends a call at On Target Claims, 561-208-1775, or go to their website, ontargetclaims.com. They cover the entire state of Florida, offices in Fort Lauderdale and Tampa, and tell them John sent you. And now, let's get to the episode. All right. Hey, folks, John Kelly, welcome back to the Law Enforcement Life Coach Sometimes Heroes Need Help podcast. Sitting down with Joss Passman and Eddie Grant, man, on target claims. And uh, I am so humbled. I get a call from these guys, and uh, they love the mission, and they want to support it. And so they are the Sometimes Heroes Need Help Law Enforcement Life Coach's very first sponsor. And uh, they have a story to tell, man. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to the boys, and we're going to talk a, a little bit about their past uh, and a lot about their present and then how you get out of your own way in this second chapter. Boys, it's great to see how you. you. How you doing, John? Wow. Thank you. Oh, man. Listen, I uh, I get a call, um, I'm at a, and I'm at a, a golfing event. And, and God knows something positive had to come from the golfing event because I suck uh, at <laughs> golfing. So the only bright spot on my day was when Eddie says to me, hey, man, uh, you, you, can we sponsor like a podcast or can we get involved with what you're doing? I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, a, a resounding yes, man. How do we make it happen? And so uh, you guys are awesome, man. I really appreciate you for everything that you did when we were on the job. And now in this second chapter, um, supporting, you know, first responders in all sorts of ways, man. And, and unfortunately, this group of first responders, man, we need help in all sorts of areas, personal, professional, financial. We, uh, and we're the last ones to ask for it. So real quick, um, Eddie, give me a little history on you coming up through the uh, through the ranks, and really, uh, and then I want to ask Josh kind of the same thing on how you guys did that transition, man, because you've done it so successfully, and I know uh, <laughs> there are a lot of guys out there that you know they uh, I think they undervalue what they bring to the table, and, and you guys have figured some things out, man. So talk to me a little bit about that, Eddie. Well, you, you know, John, I mean, obviously, thank you for having us on today first, and uh, you nailed it. Um, I had been a fan of your podcast and, and, and watching your shows for uh, quite some time since you started, right. and uh, I, I really saw the value in what you're doing, and <clears throat> when Josh and I and, and Mike DiMaggio started on Target, one of the things that we wanted to focus on was was the law enforcement first responders aspect of it and the reason for that was and why i thought we would be a good team uh and we wanted to sponsor you and believe us you say you're humbled we're humbled to be able to to be a part of what you're doing because you're providing a great service and a great outlet uh something that's been long overdue 
long overdue in uh, not only law enforcement, but fire rescue and, and all of uh, the first responders, because we all deal with uh, traumatic things. And before I get into our story, I mean, obviously, just to give some your audience a backdrop on us, I've known you since almost the academy. So yeah, we're man. going back 30 years, John. Yeah. Um, time. And honestly, you've been true to yourself and you are the same person you were that I met at Danny's bar, you know, when we first opened yeah, the right. door and started down this path in our careers at the sheriff's office. Um, anyways, uh, working with you was always a pleasure when you were in canine and, you know, I was in narcotics and just all of the things we always cross paths. I was uh, in SWAT for 25 years and we always worked together. And then when you were in training, you really yeah. made a very, uh, uh, an impact on me personally, uh, because I really thought the, what you brought to the table, it's a lot like what you do on your podcast here. You were a trainer that you told the honest truth. Sometimes it might hurt. Sometimes feelings can get hurt, but you yeah, did man. a great job. And, uh, <clears throat> anyways, so, uh, I retired after 30 years, much like you, you know, we yeah. did great careers and, uh, it was just time to move on. And, you nailed it, man. It is a scary, uh, you know, when you've done something since you were, I was a kid, I was 20 years old when I started. And um, much like Josh, all of us have the same story. Yeah. And to do a career 30 years later and now say, I'm going to reinvent myself and do something new. It takes you out of, uh, and a lot of us in police work, love our comfort zones. Yeah, man. And when you have to step out of it, it was unsettling at first. And, it, you know, because you're doing something new and you don't know if you're going to be good at it. Right. And, uh, um, you know, you just have to have the, uh, you know, take a deep breath and, and don't be afraid to go through that door. Because since we started on target, we've been uh, knock on wood. We've we've been able to be very successful, but at the same time, provide a lot of assistance to people. And the reason why we're here today and Josh will follow up on this, uh, it was Hurricane Ian. You know, we were a relatively new business at that time. And uh, we went to the West Coast, myself, Josh and Mike. And we were over there and we were working to help people that were affected by Hurricane Ian uh, fight with their insurance companies. Because as crazy as it sounds, you would think that a hurricane it's obvious what happened. It's outside of people's controls. Their right. lives were turned upside down and the insurance companies were not uh, welcoming them with open arms. You know, I kind of laugh at the commercials when you see an insurance company, you know, like a good neighbor. Yeah, they, we're going to be here for you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's not accurate, sadly enough. And, and, and that's just my personal opinion from what right. I experienced. But what we noticed <clears throat> and Josh and I had conversations when we were over there in Cape Coral, Fort Myers, uh, uh, Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte, is we saw the police officers. Some of the some officers, uh, sorry, I, just and some of these cops we saw were from our own jurisdiction that were over there. So even further. yeah, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and they're in the intersections and they're directing traffic day in and day out. Every day we'd go by and we'd see the same officers out there. And we, Josh and I, started asking. You know, we were in a conversation. And we're like, wow, you know, as many times as we were deployed. Uh, on a hurricane deployment in right. South Florida. You know, what did we think about when we were deployed as cops? It was, you know, okay, do I need to bring a change of clothes? How much food do I need to have right. for 72 hours? All the things that your bosses tell you to do before a deployment. Never did I consider, okay, should I have my insurance policy and important documents in a Ziploc baggie yeah. set aside where I know I can get it or my wife or family member can get right. it? Uh, what about when the phones are down? Who's calling in? Am I? And now I'm out right. in the intersection. Yeah. What I'm happens when the you're the one that you're the first responder that's affected and you're called into work? Right. Well, yet your house yes. still might have been and demolished. Your fucking house isn't standing. Right. Um, and, and so half, that's what kind of got us on this. You know, and Eddie, I just want you know half the stress that you missed out on that is when you get called with these things. The other thought is, you know, the own stress of your that your agency's putting on you, like the, with these little things of like what uniform you're going to show up in, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. these, are, these are the real stresses of the things that you're getting yelled at. And, you know, you, you didn't show up in the right uniform. And you, the last thing you have time to think about is your 
your house, right. you know, your insurance, what, you know, who you're going to get to fix it because you're gone. Um, and I, I think, think we've, we've all been blessed not to be affected by complete devastation. I, I don't even know how you start to get back to normal while still being a first responder. It's not like you can just go, hey, my shit's destroyed. Uh, I'm not coming to work today. Right. That doesn't happen. You, you know, you, 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 your job is to take care of other people. Um, and I got to imagine, man, that when you started reaching out to some of these guys and girls and saying, Hey, who, who's doing this for you? Who's, who's helping you get back to normal. I, they got to look at you with a blank stare. Yeah. It, it, I don't think a lot of people think about it until suddenly they're sitting there, you know, kind of helpless, sadly, because their phones aren't working. They can't get in touch with the insurance company. They, you know, they have their family saying, what do we do and what are we going to do now? And and yet they have to go to work and deal with everybody else's loss and problems. It's, it's, right. it's a lot of pressure. And we wanted to do what we could to relieve that. Like, all right, we're going to help you navigate this insurance. You don't have to worry about this. We got it. Right. And that's what we did in many, many instances. And, and you know, John, let me take that even a step back is, you know, a little bit about me is, you know, I, I was a, I grew up down here, a Marine Corps veteran, um, spent four and a half years active in the Marine Corps, went in 99, 9-11 happened, got extended, um, came out, uh, went, became a cop at 22 years old, uh, spent most of my career uh, in the secret squirrels, you know, undercover narcotics. Yep. Um, you know, over a DEA task force. What happened is, prior, right before COVID, uh, I had bought a house. Um, the only thing I ever thought about was being a cop. I mean, that's that's it. And I was passionate about what I was doing. Uh, you know, I left full time. You know, at like almost 21 years. Um, I left a little early. Uh, I'm still reserve because uh, I need to, you know, get the couple more years to get my pension. Uh, but what happened is, I had a claim at my own house. Um, didn't know anything about insurance, hired a public adjuster who gave me less than stellar representation, you know, didn't return calls, didn't show up, you know, the insurance, I hired him to do a service or his firm to do a service. When the insurance company showed up to my house, I was, he didn't even show up. I was doing it by myself. So mm. out of necessity, I decided I was going to advocate for myself and learn this business. And then I started doing it just for other guys at work. So when you say learn this business, man, you went all in. Went all in. Just because I had, I realized that the person I hired sucked. They weren't going to, they weren't representing my best interests. So I started reading my policy and seeing what the insurance company was saying. And then I said, well, this is pretty easy because, you know, they're making this argument based on, you know, inaccurate facts or, or you know, they're misrepresenting what the facts are to get out of paying me. What, what I was truly, uh, you know, needed to rebuild my house. Uh, so I decided to get, you know, once I realized that, that this was something I enjoyed doing, uh, Eddie will tell Eddie was my former boss, uh, at the sheriff's office. He'll tell you that I enjoy a good argument. Um, <laughs> I'm, you know, sure. I'm, always, <laughs> I'm always good for a good debate, you know, with someone of authority. Right. Um, you know, people would uh, even question me. These guys at work were questioning, was I really in the Marine Corps? Because for a Marine, I was like, you know, not very good with taking orders sometimes. Right, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, a so, couple of ins insubordination uh, chits in that jacket of yours. Yes. And if, and probably, you know, if I wasn't such a good detective, uh, I, Eddie probably would have thrown me out of that unit. Yeah, no doubt. A long time. <laughs> no um, doubt. So... What happened is, you know what, I got licensed and I started doing this on the side for, for, for police officers, you know, uh, you know, different people I work with, a DEA, FBI. And I realized that, you know, obviously there was a business, but that we were providing a service because people, these insurance policies are written to be very confusing. Dude, um, it's, it's like a mortgage. Listen, it's like the papers that you fill out for a mortgage loan. Like you just sign, you just sign. I Who, who the hell can read? all of that and decipher all that language it's very confusing right like for instance if you look in your insurance policy for something that says plumbing which is the common 
cause of loss, you know, a common thing that happens, a, a plumbing leak, there, no, very rarely will you even see the word plumbing in your insurance policy. Instead, it's referred to as accidental discharge. So, you know, you you start reading, you're like, wait, I'm not even covered for plumbing. What is it? The, but then you have to read, you know, the, the verbiage. Uh, so these, yeah. these are little things that accidental discharge. They, well, I'm not going to shoot myself. You know, what's exactly. the, what, what the hell are they talking about? Right. Yep. Exactly. That's the only accidental discharge I knew the old AD. Yeah. Um, luckily never had one. So th this is how it started. And then, you know, what happened, uh, Eddie and my, I forget how Eddie and Mike and I, uh, I, Eddie and I, our kids are the same age. We go away on vacation. I, I remember one summer I told him, Hey, I'm just going to start doing this. Um, I don't know, a couple months later, we checked in and I said, Hey, like I'm doing, why don't you guys come do this with me? Right. Uh, we went to lunch and that was, and that was it. You know, it's, uh, I, I gotta tell you, you did it out of necessity, but, and it's funny. I think about all the crazy <laughs> things that we've done over our careers, all the dangerous things like that. We didn't even give a shit about like, what, what are we going to do? Just, you know, follow me, let's go. And, and then you're like. <laughs> That's like, that terrifies most people. Like I'm not doing the people are shooting, you know, and you're like, no, it's not a problem. Like, just, just, you know, stay over here. And we do that, right. We do that with our eyes closed, but you starting a business and, and, and a cop, a first responder leaving that and, and going out on their own and trying to start something from scratch. That's terrifying. Getting shot at isn't a really a big deal. Starting your own business or doing something other than police work, it's overwhelming. It's daunting that the, 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 even the thought of that. How did you guys wrap your heads? Around, listen, I, you're both alphas. You're both extremely squared away, man. How? But how? Even with all that in your background, how did you guys make that transition? Like, yeah, this is something I can do. Like, what? What, what were the, some of the steps mentally that you went through? uh to make that a reality because there's a bunch of guys and girls man that are that are really awesome that have so much to offer the um uh, the the private sector right Absolutely. that they 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 almost convince themselves that like oh well, I'm just I'm just I'm just a cop I'm just a <laughs> detective I don't have any skill sets that would transfer into this other I mean it's a lot of self out and a lot of negative talk man but you guys said fuck it man like we're gonna do this um well, how does that happen man here here for me and here's what it was you're right i didn't realize again i was always a people person but i didn't realize that i had the skills to successfully run a business but these were skills that i developed that from being a detective in narcotics my job as a detective in narcotics was to to gain people's trust, people that had arrested, caught with 20 kilos of cocaine that are looking to go to, you know, going to federal prison for 15, 20 years. I had to earn their trust on my word because what else do they have? You know, there's nothing in writing when you're flipping these people to cooperate with you. Right. Um, and I realized that that was part of, that was just part of being a salesman. Uh, I was selling myself and, a, and something I believed in, which was that them, them cooperating with us. And I, you know what else? I always kept true to my word, even with the uh, criminal, because your word is everything. And if I told these guys that I would be at their sentencing because they did whatever they had to do to help us, guess what? Whether the government liked it or not, who was standing at their sentencing? They were at their sentencing, vouching for what they did. Yeah. And, and, and I didn't realize, but when I started dealing with people, uh, with clients, not criminals, but you know, my new clients in the business, I had these skills because I was dealing with this for 20 years as a cop. And it was very scary for me, especially, you know, I, I'm not gonna speak for Eddie, maybe less so for Eddie, because when Eddie left, he had a pension, you know, he was a, you know, he retired. Sure. Um, I left, I made a bold move. Uh, I had 20 years full time. Luckily, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I have a very good support system at home. My wife, who's a, my wife's a, a special agent with the DEA. Um, she said, what are you doing? I've been telling you for a year, do it. And part of my biggest hesitation, and I could see a lot of people's hesitation, especially in my situation, if I made the jump without having my pension, is what if this goes wrong? 
my fam, I have two little kids. My family's depending on me. Uh, you know, the last thing you want to hear from your spouse is you shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? Like, I so told you. Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so for me, that pressure was off at least. But you know what it is? I just realized that I had the skills that it takes to manage an operation. Uh, you know, as the case agent, uh, I was running yes. these wiretaps for five years where I had all these moving parts. To run a business with a couple of uh, adjusters and some, you know, clients and listen, all my all of our clients at this point aren't first responders. So I have, I have clients from all walks of life. Some need more attention than others. Right. Um, but I have managed this. I've managed, you know, m huge multi million dollar federal investigations. You just didn't. You just don't realize how your skills translate, and you need to have the confidence in yourself. You need to have a great support system at home, and you need to be allow yourself to be a little vulnerable and and talk to the people that support you. Like in this case, my wife is my biggest, you know, supporter. Sure. And I'm honest about my fears. And she and because if I if I didn't verbalize and wasn't honest about my fears, I don't think I think I would have just been paralyzed by yeah. it. You know, yeah. and, and it yeah. was it was being honest with myself. Have saying, the tough have the tough conversation. Yeah. I am scared. I was scared. And you know what? I'm scared. I'm still scared every day. That the business won't, you know, I, of course I have anxiety that will the business, even though we're very successful, that could change. But you know what? I We know what I'm not scared of anymore. Even if it did, I know that I'm probably never going to go back to police work just because it's not, I did it and I'm ready for the next chapter of my life. Right. But I'll be successful whatever my next venture is. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, That's awesome. I agree. I agree with Josh. I mean, it's... Uh... It is just, we have two different stories. He didn't have a pension and I'll be the first to tell you, John, I was trying to talk him out of, because we, before he had left, uh, we had already started the business. And, and then when he said that he was going to, uh, you know, step away and, and become a reserve to get his last few years, I, I, you know, me having gone out with a pension, I understand that I do have a little bit of a fallback in the event something doesn't work. You know, my, right. my bills are still being paid. Thankfully. Right. But, um, you know, going back to that, what Josh just said, what you do as a police officer or a firefighter or, or, or a paramedic and, uh, you know, you're dealing with people every day and you're dealing, and especially for law enforcement, you're dealing with people usually at their worst. People in crisis. Crisis. They're vulnerable. They're upset. They're angry. And you're able to go in there and use the people skills that you've developed throughout your career to be able to rationalize, talk with them, understand that they they have a reason to be upset. You know, we all know how we've been able to de-escalate situations. Yeah, calm the situation you, down, man. Correct. And that's what I found we do in this business because people, again, are usually, they're, they're in a moment of crisis. That's, you know, for somebody, you walk in someone's house, like Josh was saying, and, and there's a a plumbing leak, it's devastating and it's expensive. And uh, I mean, people are in full panic mode and right. we're kind of that. All right, we got this. We're going to walk you through it. This is it's it's going to be a, it's a pain in the neck right now, but we're going to get you through it and we're going to get you back on your feet. Right. That's um, I appreciate you guys sharing that. The um, I think the better we get at sharing our stories on how you how we transition and how we start uh, there's a bunch of guys right now that are just they're in limbo man they just they think just because they retire that, that you know i'm gonna sit around and i'm gonna fish every day and i'm gonna and and, and what what i'm seeing is that if, if guys that have lived a life of service retire without purpose right it's a short life man it's a short life and, and so you guys are, are perfectly aligned with something different, but still providing a service, still taking care of people that need, you know, that in their darkest time, right? Right. In their darkest time, they need somebody to come in there and tell them that everything's going to be okay. And you're doing that from a position of experience and knowledge. Um, and I guess I should have said this. I mean, on target claims, I mean, you represent the policyholder 
like on the worst day, man, when they actually have to file a claim and going up against big corporations, you don't feel like you have a voice. You just, you're just a number and who's going to listen to me and who gives a shit, you know, my house was everything. And, or maybe it's not a, a, a catastrophic loss. Maybe it's a, it's a water damage or I, I come to find out you guys handle all sorts of claims. Tell me about that because I, I initially wrongfully just thought that, you know, when there was a natural disaster, I mean, obviously you guys are all in and helping people during natural disasters, but that's not the only time claims get filed. No, no. So the way, and the way I started, when I, when I first started doing this, that we hadn't had a hurricane over here for, this is before, way before Ian and I started this. We hadn't had a hurricane in our area, anything significant, you know, for a while. Um, and I started doing this mostly for plumbing. You know, people would have a pipe leak or whatever. And, you know, we do anything, any, any we can represent the, a policy. Our license, just to give you a background on, on what it takes, we have a state insurance license, uh, which the initial part of that license allow, would allow us to work for an insurance company. It's like an all lines adjuster. However, then to become a public adjuster, you have to do a six month apprenticeship with a licensed public adjusting firm that they have to appoint you with the state then take another state test. Um, and once you pass that state test, then you can get the public adjuster license, which you have to give up the other license. So we don't have any affiliation to the insurance company. We don't get any money from the insurance company, which means our loyalty is with our clients who are the policyholders. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big distinction to make, man. You know, being independent the way you are, you're on you're on team John Kelly, man. We want what's best for you and your family. We want to make you whole again. Regardless yes. of what the insurance company's objective is, we're, yes. we're fighting for you. And and there is listen, I'm not gonna say that there there look, it's you know, I the I give people clients the old adage of, well, if you got arrested, would you because they say, Why do I need an adjuster if State Farm is gonna I'm just using State Farm as an example, is gonna send me they're, they're going to send an adjuster and say, well, if you were getting sued or you got arrested, would you go to court without an attorney? Would you let the prosecutor represent you in your, you know, defend you? Well, no. I said, well, then why would you allow the person that State Farm is paying to be your representative and your advocate? My, and some, there's no conflict of interest there. <laughs> and, and sometimes, look, these are, these, a lot of these guys that I deal with, the field adjusters, they are good people and they have... And they don't have bad intentions. They really don't. But they have guidelines, and they have rules, and they have management. And the management, who never sets foot in the person's house that's affected, it's easy for them to throw behind a desk to say, don't pay them this much. This is what you got to do. Cut your estimate down from here. And that's often what happens. Right. Um, right. There's been a lot of stuff in the news about it where the insur these adjusters were whistleblowers and came out and said, look, I wrote an estimate for, I'm just making up a number, $100,000. But someone at the insurance company, after I submitted it, changed it to $30,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there there is people in, you know, the insurance company, they're not nonprofit. They're for-profit companies right? Uh, that make billions of dollars. And their goal is to retain as many of those billions as they can while paying their policyholders, you know, the least amount possible to bring them back uh, right. to pre conditions. Um, yeah. and, and you know what the same, I'm sure if you had a, a representative from one of the insurance companies on the, on your show, they would say that, oh, well, public adjusters and attorneys are the problems because we're dri we drive up the cost because, you know, we're, we're over inflating. Instances. You know what? I'm sure just like cops, there's bad apples in every right. bunch. Okay. There truly is. Uh, well, but I, 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 I'm going to cut you off if you don't okay. mind, Josh. You could make the argument that if they were doing their jobs the right way, if they were being fair, right? Because listen, we just want fair, right? If they were being fair, you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a job. We never business. Son. And so, listen, there's good and bad in everything, but the only reason why your business is in existence is because the current process has been unfair, has unfairly been treating the policyholder, and. Uh, you know, having that representation, having somebody knowledgeable like yourselves saying, nah, man, no, 
no, we're not doing it that way. This is what's fair. John, you know what's funny going on with what you just said, Josh and I experience a lot of times, and Mike, um, where we'll get clients that they, they've they tried to work with their insurance company initially on their own, right? file the claim and start the process, sure. and then they get grossly underpaid. They send an insulting offer where it's so low that these people are, wait a second. Then they contact us. And, and I'm sure Josh will nod his head now saying in almost every one of those instances, people will say, well, you know, I tried to do it the right way. And we're like, why, why is that doing, the right way? I'm doing the air quotes because yeah. the often phrase, I tried to do the right thing. Well, yeah. I don't know what the right thing is. What is the right <laughs> thing? Letting your insurance company trample all over you. Right. Uh, I don't know. Because the majority other... of people, they're good people, and they, mm-hmm. they, they operate from a, a, a basis that if I'm honest and, and forthcoming, that you're going to be the same with me. And, and that's that's very naive in, in, in today's world. And it's perplexing that I go to a house where, I was just at one last week, where, you know, listen, when we go to people's houses, we do a very honest evaluation, even though this is how we support ourselves with our business. I don't, we don't go to someone's house when there's very little damage and encourage them to file a claim because there are ramifications for making insurance claims. There's a record, the insurance companies have a record, uh, you know, and I don't tell people, we don't advocate to make a claim for something that you could easily afford that could be fixed, you know, for a thousand dollars. That's not really the time to use your insurance. But again, you shouldn't be afraid to use your insurance. They're not the mafia. You're not paying them for protection. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. (laughs) Uh, Good you know, analogy. It's true. And that's the way I tell that to people all the time. Like, what are you paying for? You know, if I go to a house and it's $50,000 in damage, you know, so I'll eyeball and be like, oh, look, this is going to be, you're probably like looking, looking at like 50 grand here. Oh, well, I'm, but, but I, I don't know if I want to make a claim. Like, well, what are you saving your insurance for? Like, you know, yeah. a nuclear explosion? You know, like, what I mean? if, like, if, 50, if 50 grand worth of damages isn't enough for you to submit a claim, what is? That's right. Yeah, so, right. And and this is, you know what it is, though, there's a, a very uh, well thought out campaign, uh, a lot of money that's put into it uh, to put fear in policyholders from using a service. Oh, what now they won't. Services? Now I won't be able to get insured. And how do right. I have a mortgage and nobody yes. will insure me? And yeah, right. yeah, what man. other service do people pay for that they're afraid to use? I don't I'm not aware of any. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And think about it. What what service? It's a service you pay for that when you use it, you're put on the dirty list. Right. It's the most mind boggling thing. If you go, if you pay for a gym membership, are you scared to do you not work out? You know what? Like, <laughs> well, that's not, not the best analogy. I know a yeah, bunch of right. motherfuckers that got gym memberships that aren't working out. But that's true. <laughs> I I understand what you're saying though. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, and that's why it's just so important what you guys do. Um. It's like you know, what you do on scene, man. When when you come up with somebody that's really that they're having that day, they just need somebody one to listen and two to provide them the comfort of of knowledge and experience and helping them navigate a very unfamiliar territory. And and a lot of what we do, you know, for, fortunately, for a lot of our backgrounds in law enforcement, you know, there are a lot of, especially in Florida. There's a lot of bad actors, uh, you know, on the contractor side. Sure. So, uh, you know, I, like right now we're representing a 98-year-old woman who hired a local company. She had a, a pipe burst in her condo and she hired a local company that easily could have built her insurance to dry out, to remediate all the water, mitigate the water damage. But instead they came there at two in the morning, scared her, and hit her with a $4,000 bill. Okay. That... The insurance, they easily could have billed it to her insurance. She didn't, she didn't, wouldn't have had it come out of pocket. They overcharged her uh, grossly. Um, and, you know, luckily I'm able to come in and look at these things. And I, like I was able to get her out. We were able to get her out of it, uh, you know, get most of the money back and referred her to a, a vendor that we work with, uh, a local company that does this and will not take a dime from the client. Right. If, even if, if their bill was three thousand dollars and the insurance company said we're only going to pay you twenty five hundred, they're only taking twenty five hundred dollars. They're not going to the client to the policyholder saying give us the other five hundred bucks. Right, 
Right. And that's the other thing that you guys um, bring to the table. Not only are you there, you know, for lack of a better term, holding the hand of the policyholder and helping them through this very stressful situation. But when it does come time, like, holy smokes, you look at the, you know, what do I do? Go to the yellow pages to find and, and hope that the guy right. that I'm contracting is licensed properly and has the proper equipment and training, or I can just rely that you've already vetted the people that you're going to align yourself with. Talk to me more about that stable of contractors that you guys have already, have already vetted, man. Well, so when you have a loss, when you have any kind of claim involving property damage, specifically with your house, since that's going to be what most people are going to experience, in your policy, you have a duty. It's in your policy. You have a duty to mitigate damages to prevent further loss. So if you have a, a plumbing leak, the insurance company wants you to take steps and hire someone. They have vendors, and you can, you're can. you free to use their vendors. Again, you know, if you, if you had no one else, I would tell you use their vendor before just calling a random person, only because at least their vendors are going to bill them directly. They may not do the best job because they're going to try to, you know, save the insurance company money, but... I would still recommend using their person over just Joe Schmo that you find off the street because Joe Schmo may stick it to you at the end. Gotcha. And you're going to sign a contract and you're going to be, so through doing this, um, we've, you know, I've made, we've made a lot of uh, connections with different vendors locally uh, that trap like for Hurricane Ian, these vendors, they traveled with us to come out to the West coast uh, and do remediation. So some of those, some of these companies, uh, they really do a good job. They're they're professional. They send first of all, all these people I've worked with for years, I would let them in my own house without me there. You don't have right. to worry about, you know, that's a big thing. A lot of, you know, especially with and I send them to, you know, all the first responders' houses that I deal with locally here. I'm confident to say, look, I let these people in my house. If right. you gotta work, you know, it's if you're high level of trust there, high yes. level of trust. Yes, they're they're vet the the company, you know, one of the companies that we work with, the local company, Erica's Plumbing, they're you get a text message with a picture of who's coming, their background, their drug tested, their background checked. Yeah. That's it's it's, it's so comforting again, because a lot of this, you know, uh, what, what no who, who's gonna be in my house? You know, well, I gotta lock up the China because you know, uh right. you know, I got Mike and I coming over. You know, <laughs> and it's 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 nice to know that hey. And I got to imagine with with Mike, Eddie, and your law enforcement background, that in and of itself has to set on target claims uh, distinctly apart from every other claims adjustment firm out there, because um, you've got a track track record of of of, of honorable service and trust to to, to the community, man. And uh, that's uh, how great is it to be able to do business with people like that? Yeah. Oh, listen, all of our, besides me, Eddie, Mike, and myself, uh, we have, we have a presence in, in Tampa. That's with my brother's uh, adjuster up there. My brother's a Marine Corps veteran, uh, was in, in, in the intelligence community, uh, ran, ran with VP of a defense contracting firm. Uh, so you're going to get the same level of professionalism, whether you call us in Tampa uh, we have other adjusters locally that are active law enforcement members that just do this on the side. So there's anyone that's a licensed Fire. adjuster with us at this point uh, is either a retired cop, a veteran, an active firefighter, or an active cop. Right. Now that's um, that's amazing because I know that that you know when I look to contract somebody or bring somebody in to help me out. I want to, I want to know that they've, you know, that this isn't something they just woke up in the middle of the night and said, I'm going to, I'm going to do this now. Um, you really, you guys, your motivation is that continuing to serve uh, people. We talked about, you know, some catastrophic damage, some water damage. What are some other types of, of, of claims guys that you might be involved in that wouldn't initially come to somebody's uh, mind? I mean, well, I mean, even just, I'll start with first things with the house, okay? There's different things that trigger coverage. There's, you know, different, they're called perils. Uh, some things that people may not realize, like 
you can have a, I have a, a Metro Dade cop. His house got struck by lightning. Very little damage to the roof. We've had houses that looks like a grenade. Okay. Very little damage, but a couple, uh, within a month, all the electrical in this house is going in. Well, to rewire your house, a licensed electrician could be like $30,000 plus yeah. whatever walls they have to cut open. This And not just for lack of knowledge, he just didn't even know this was a claim until a mutual friend said, hey, you should call on these guys. And I said, absolutely, that's a covered loss in your policy. A lightning strike is covered. You know, these are things that people don't think about. Oh, it's my electrical system. Um, some of the, the other things that we do is anything involving property damage. Typically, we don't really do car uh, car claims, uh, but we would do boats. Um, you know, any uh, we could do an airplane. Uh, if you have a farm and your crops freeze over and they're insured and the insurance company doesn't want to pay you for what you lost, that's something we would step in and we can represent you on. Right now, I'm representing a big uh, national marketing firm who got hacked to the tune of like six hundred thousand um, dollars, and they have a cyber uh, policy that that protects them from data loss and hacking. We're representing them uh, on the business interruption portion of their claim. So something like that, uh, we have we I besides the, the plumbers, the roofers, the mold people, I have same way that I had my network uh, as a detective, my expert witnesses when I would go to trial. Right. I have a, a forensic accountant that I bring in. Uh, the forensic accountant, you know, helps prepare, go through all their books, tax returns, and quantify what the actual loss wow. to their business is. Now, um, I know you guys have two locations in Florida, but that's not to say, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, that's not to say that if I've got a listener out in uh, Iowa or, or somewhere up and down the East Coast or even on the West Coast, um, your expertise and listen, I, the, with technology, really, we don't have boundaries, you know? So would you guys be available to assist somebody in another state should they find themselves in, in a crisis that um, they don't feel comfortable with the local uh, citizenry, so to speak? Yeah, well, th yes. The answer is yes, as long as we're able to. Certain states do not even require, since we're licensed, we have a, a license in our home state, Certain states like Tennessee, for instance, doesn't require us to be licensed. We can just okay. use our So there's license. some reciproca reciprocating with licenses. Some states, you don't even need a license, but certainly your expertise is needed. Yes. And and there, I've done out-of-state claims for, for people in, you know, if there was a, let's say there's certain states that it's a reciprocal license, but we just have to pay a hundred dollar licensing fee, you gotcha. know, to not, not a problem. I'll gladly pay the hundred bucks. Uh, get licensed. And if the, you know, there, there has been claims where I would try, you know, if it's big enough and to require us there, we have no problem traveling and spending time there to document the loss. Sometimes I have, we also have a network uh, through different professional associations. Like we're members of CAPIA, Florida Association of Public Insurance Adjusters. I mean, what is that right. really? But these are people that are vetted businesses. So I can give, I can refer to other people that I, maybe I've given referrals to in that state. But a lot of time, what you said, we'd be happy, especially for one of your listeners. They can send us pictures. We can FaceTime. We can review their policy. Uh, I'm happy to review people's policies. Uh, we don't charge for that, okay? Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that the other day. You know, I think it would be a great idea. Well, you're not in crisis. Right. Yes. Well, 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 you have clarity and, and, and you, you, you're not worrying about the safety and security of everything um, to know what you're covered for. Well, that's the biggest issue, because what happens is once you have a loss, if you find out then that what you're covered for and it's not sufficient, it's too late. You oh, know? oh, so I can't up. I can't up the policy after the fact. No, no. If you didn't have flood insurance, you listen, I've gone to someone's house after Ian that was flooded. They didn't have flood insurance. And they said, well, can't we? I said, can't we say it was the rain? I'm like, uh, well, no, I can't do that because it's illegal. Doesn't but number two, yeah. number two, the insurance company, look, the, some of these people might be dumb, but they're not that dumb. Right. Uh, they're going to see a flood line in your house. They know that there was massive flooding, storm surge. You, 
it's too late. We can't go back and get a policy retroactive. It's too late. That's why they stop writing policies. And the biggest thing, the biggest problem in Florida that I see, and I hate being the bearer of bad news, Eddie was a victim to this himself, uh, is people have $10,000 sublimits on their policy for water, for water damage. All right. Now, so in, in English, Josh. Yes. So when I say water damage, everyone says flood. Just we're not talking about flood. Flood is a, a different policy that's not covered by home insurance, and that's water coming from the outside in. Okay, water damage meaning a pipe burst in your house and destroys your brand new kitchen that you spent fifty thousand dollars on. Does this sound familiar, Eddie? <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, mine was a shower pan leak, and uh, yeah, so one of the reasons I got into the industry, I found out the heart, much like Josh found out when it was too late and uh it wasn't something that was explained to me when i got the policy i was just i have i'm insured i have insurance i have homeowners i'm good and uh i wasn't and i had to go out of pocket for for the repairs uh part of it you know they gave me my ten thousand dollars but the repairs exceeded they didn't that. even didn't even put a dent in the damage that takes it. care of the plumbing usually you no. maybe and that so that that's the issue with that this $10,000, look, there's certain companies like Citizens, if that's all you can get insured by, you have no choice. That's just in their policy. You can't remove it. But at least Citizens gives you another option. Their option is if you don't if you don't want to take the money, you can at least we'll subcontract out the, our vendors. And then your limit is whatever your coverage A, your dwelling limit is, the four or $500,000. Okay. I mean, not ideal that you have to use their vendors, but at least you're not up shit's creek without a path. Right, right. There's other uh, options. But there's other companies that don't give you that option. And I've gone to some of these houses. I know you used to work in Windmill Ranches in West Bend. Yeah. I went to a, a multi-million dollar home in there. And I was like, wow, this house, is the floors are destroyed, all wood floors. $10,000 is the most you're getting. And his response was, how could my agent sell me a policy when he knows I live in this house? Well, he because these are maybe the only couple of companies he represented. And he wanted the commission mm. and, mm. and they, and, or they wanted to give you a cheaper policy because they wanted the sale, but they didn't explain it to you. And sure. the, problem, the, the agents are not well-versed. I'm not, not knocking the agents, There's plenty of great ones out there, but some of them are not well-versed with how the claims process goes Sure. and the product they're selling, truly the product they're selling. And once you have that $10,000 supplement, there's nothing we could do to get you out. We can work wonders and pull rabbits out of a hat. Right. When there's a contract that gives you coverage. Sure. Sure. But if the contract is black and white and says you're only getting 10 grand, I can't make them give you 12. Right. And that's funny. You know, you think about that. I, uh, I'm going to have you guys review my policy because I'm looking around my house and I'm going, uh, you know, I've got a, I've got, maybe I have a gun room maybe with, you know, and one of those guns might be more than my car, you know? And oh. so, if if the home gets burglarized, you know, if they get past Mr. Wallace, uh, what, <laughs> what, what what's what 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 kind of reimbursement am I getting? I can well, tell you, it's not they're not covering the cost of of that collection. No, um, the standard homeowner's policy gives you, I I believe, twenty five hundred dollars for firearms. Yeah, uh, that's the max. So I don't care. Like I. You can't see it. I have a gun safe right to my right too. I have yeah. a, I, I have one 1911. That's probably five thousand dollars. Sure. Okay? Yeah. I actually, you have to call your insurance. There's plenty of companies that specialize in this. Here's another one: your wife's engagement ring, or right. you know, the diamond ring that you saved up and worked two years of details to pay for because right. you you got the trophy wife and you had to put a big rock on her finger. Yeah, know, Mrs. Kelly right. doesn't play. Yeah. So guess what? <laughs> that ring not covered. Covered for twenty five hundred bucks. Right. If your house gets burglarized, you need to have scheduled coverage for valuables. Cash not covered. Jewelry not covered. Uh, you know, if you if you have your Pokemon Pokemon collection, I don't know what these people are into these days. Right. Sure. Probably not covered. You need you need. There, that's there, something I can tell you. Nobody thinks about. I got insurance. Right. right. Not for that. Got insurance. I'm covered. I'm good. Um, dude, so much information. So much information. I um, I want to ask, and I kind of want to wrap up with this. You know, if there's some, for for both uh, Josh and Eddie, 
some advice that you could leave. It, this there's been so much information um, for the listener, but some advice you could leave them with um, moving forward. That um, it's about being prepared, right? It's about being proactive. Yeah, so, so, some some advice that you could leave the listener with before we wrap up, boys. Eddie, you right. you 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 just nailed it right there. No different than going to work with the right mindset, you know, before you start a shift, being prepared through training. It's, a, it's the same thing. Uh, I was taken advantage. But no, I wasn't taken advantage by my insurance company because I signed the, the contract. I just was misinformed. I wasn't I didn't prepare myself. I didn't bother to take the time or go to somebody like a Josh or myself or Mike and say, hey, can you review my policy? Can you let me know? Am I adequately covered? And, you know, we'll tell you, sometimes people want that premium. You know, yeah. they want that low, you know, fee and that's it. But it's the old, you get what you pay for sometimes. Can't have and the sweet without the sour, man. You got to be careful. So I would say just be prepared. Uh, stay ahead of it. It's, you know, m uh, our biggest thing was we just, no one like us came from, we didn't have an outlet like your show where we didn't know. And if you don't know, you don't know until it's right. too late. And uh, if now, if your listeners, you know, you kind of have that ability. And if they don't want to reach out to us, if they want to reach out to somebody, maybe they know or do it themselves and educate themselves. But it's just know what your policy covers. So that way, when it, when and if something bad happens, you're not left holding the bag or just completely shell shot. Yeah, that's great advice, Eddie. Josh? Yeah, I... I what, just piggybacking on what Eddie said, the biggest thing that people need to do is, number one, review your policy. If you don't want to review it, you don't have time, send it to us. We don't charge. I, we don't charge anyone for that. It doesn't take us. I know there's only so many insurance companies in Florida. I know these policies like the back of my hand. So send me your policy. I'll look. I make sure you don't have the exclusions. I'll tell you uh, what you maybe want to think about adding or changing. I can't tell you the price for that. I'm not an agent, but I'll tell you. On the claim side, I was affecting the biggest thing people could do is, you know, I, you can't predict when a pipe's going to burst, but, you know, when, as far as the storm goes, if we get that hurricane, that once that cone, you know, the, the, the Home Depot Publix cone that, you know, <laughs> yeah, man. Want, once we're in the cone, don't wait until you're getting called up. Take, take 20 minutes, go around your house with your phone, take a video. Yes. Take a video showing the condition of your house hours before the hurricane, because guess what? The insurance company, they operate like cops. They don't believe you. Not, not that they don't believe, but you know, they're very suspect that everything is- You need to prove. Yes, prove. yes. And what better proof if you have on your narrating saying, hey, today is September 21st, 2023. I am walking, this is, the, this is my house. This is my couch. This is my contents. This is my room, you know, whatever. You don't have to climb, it's got to be that right. in, in, in depth. Uh, but just the overall pictures and video that will help us to make your case and show the condition of your house hours before the storm. These little things that take a few minutes really will have a better effect, you know, will help you if you do experience a loss. That's awesome advice, guys. It, it's awesome advice. Now fucking take it. Do what <laughs> they said, right? Get educated, get prepared, document what you have. And by all means, listen, um, on targetclaims.com, reach out to Eddie, Josh, Mike, and, and let them put you at ease, right? Let you, let them put you at ease, man. Uh, cause it's really where we're at and in, in, in the times that we're, we're in, man, it's not a question of if man, it's just a question of when. So if we know that that's an inevitability, man, get prepared boys. Thank you so much for your time, man. I love you guys. I appreciate what you're doing. And uh, man, I'm looking forward to continuing this relationship. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And that.